Hello, George Romanich here. Today we will talk about one interesting phenomena of apparent gravity that I didn't explicitly mention in the last video on centrifugal force, and that is the fact that the vector of apparent gravity does not pass through the center of the Earth, which one would expect if the Earth was not rotating and the only uh, force is the gravity. Then the gravity would indeed pull all objects uh, towards the center of the Earth. However, Earth is rotating, as you can see on my left over there, and therefore we are all experiencing centrifugal force. The superposition between these two forces, namely centrifugal force and the gravity, results in something called apparent gravity, which I, which I discussed and mathematically derived in the last video. In this video, we will look into the deflection angle for a plumb bob between the vector of real gravity and the vector of apparent gravity. This is my home version of the plumb bob and uh, the line that is connecting the tip of my fingers where I'm holding this rope and the center of mass of these car keys, which is my plumb bump, bump, uh, actually does not go through the center of the Earth, but rather deviates thanks to the apparent gravity. The deviation is very, very small, but nevertheless it exists. Now, in my room, north is uh, in the direction between camera and my left hand, so this would be the direction of the north. And we will see in the south hemisphere, uh, in the north hemisphere, sorry, where I am, in the north hemisphere, the apparent gravity deflects the plumb line towards the south, which means that if there was no rotation of the earth, this homemade plumb bob would look like something like this. Now I am hugely over-exaggerating this effect, but nevertheless, this is the sign of deviation, so to speak. Uh, so this would be the gravity without centrifugal force on the Earth, on North Hemisphere, but because we have centrifugal force and these two forces superimpose, the gravity, apparent gravity, ends up being like this. Now we will quickly derive this deflection angle using the tools of mathematics and knowledge of physics. Let's do it. This is where we concluded last time. The centrifugal force is the, this triple cross product, where m is mass, omega is angular velocity of the Earth, and uh, r is radius vector of the Earth. Or in the component form, we got uh, these three components, where phi is latitude. Uh, so. I highly recommend you check that video, link is in the description. Today, we want to find the deviation angle between apparent gravity and true gravity. And the answer is already in these uh, expressions, but we need to know how to extract it. To do that, I will take, let's say, this to be half of my Earth. And similar to last time, this is the center of the Earth, let's say. And this is the point that I'm interested in over here. Towards the center of the Earth, I have force mg, real gravity. Centrifugal force acts radially out in respect to the vector of angular velocity omega. So this is FCF, centrifugal force. And uh, in the last video also, you saw that this is the vertical coordinate of my non-inertial reference frame. Namely, in the same direction as the radius vector. This angle over here is latitude, phi. Now, the apparent gravity is the composition of these two forces, so I need to sum up these two forces, and I get apparent gravity acting like this, mg prime. We used prime for apparent gravity. The deviation angle is this, and I will call it delta. I hope you can see now my marker is too thick, but this is the angle delta for deviation. How do I find this angle? 
Well, I will notice that tangent of this angle delta is the opposite side, which is, as you can see, the meridional component of my centrifugal force, which is minus m r omega squared cosine phi sine phi divided by the adjacent side. And what is adjacent side? Well, it's the vector mg minus this portion over here. And this portion over here is the vertical component of the centrifugal force. So I get that this is minus mg minus because it is acting in the negative direction of positive z axis and plus m vertical component r uh, omega squared cosine squared phi. Now you can see I can uh, cancel all masses and I end up with this expression. Now this expression can be simplified because remember that uh, radius of the earth is uh, approximately 6370 kilometers and the angular velocity of the earth is uh, approximately 7.292 times 10 to the power of minus 7 radians per second which means that this term r omega squared is much smaller than g namely r omega squared is much much smaller than g in fact if you calculate this you will see that this term is 0 0.034 and g is 9.81 of course both come in the in the, the units of meters per second squared which means that g is around 300 times larger than this which means i can neglect this term compared to g and this business of neglecting terms in the de denominator was also used in my video on a stress tensor okay this also further means that this uh, nominator will be much smaller than denominator and therefore delta will be very small angle and we know that tangent for small angles is approximately equal to that angle so if I adopt these two approximations, then I can write that instead of tangent delta, I have delta equals, and now I don't have this term anymore, so I will have r omega squared divided by g times cosine phi times sine phi. And this is expression for the deviation angle delta with these assumptions that we uh, adopted here. Now I hope you can see that deviation angle doesn't exist at the pole, poles or at the equator because uh, one of these terms is always one cosine or sine phi is uh, always equal zero at these two points. Largest deviation is clearly at 45 degrees and it just happened I live in Montreal where phi is indeed approximately 45 degrees. And uh, if you calculate deviation you, at uh, the latitude of 45 degrees, you will see that the deviation angle delta is approximately what, at 45 degrees, 1.7 times 10 to the power of minus three radians or that is equal 0 0.097 degrees or we can round this to one decimal place and say it is approximately 0 0.1 degrees. So you can see that the largest deviation angle at 45 degrees is uh, only a tenth of a degree, this angle here. However, it does exist. And you can see from this, well, let maybe use red color. You can see from this figure what I talked about that the plumb bob actually has this vertical. And our buildings, therefore, are leaning in, uh, in this way in respect to the vertical z axis that would go straight through the center of the earth that is somewhere here. 
and we just derive this deviation angle over here. In other way, the apparent gravity, so to speak, undershoots in respect to the center of the Earth. You can see on South Hemisphere, we would have similar phenomena. The apparent gravity would still undershoot compared to the center of the Earth that is here. There you go. Now you saw that the angle is very, very small, but nevertheless it exists, and it's a, it is an interesting phenomenon. Now, this also means that when, you are, when uh, people are building uh, houses and other kinds of structures, that the vertical they are using to measure the, uh, how the wall will end up is actually vertical in respect to the apparent gravity, which means that all our buildings are leaning in respect to the vector of true gravity. Now the question is, should we build buildings in respect to the apparent gravity, vertical, that is uh, vertical to the apparent gravity, or vertical that is in respect to the true gravity? Well, the answer is vertical in respect to the apparent gravity, because overall, this is the force that we are experiencing. Theoretically, if the building, if the wall is vertical in respect to the real gravity, there would be a moment of force that would create very, very small bending moment because you saw that the deflection angle is very, very small. But nevertheless, there would be some, uh, at least in theory, some deflection angle and uh, moment of force. So it is good that we are building our buildings in respect to the apparent gravity. Whenever I talk about this moment of force, uh, something completely not related to this crosses my mind. Uh, when I was first year undergraduate student, I worked a few days at a construction site to get enough money to go to seaside with my friends. And uh, I just passed my exam on uh, classical mechanics and I was working on that construction site and the guy that was organizing everything, the, 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 the boss over there, let's say, uh, he was standing next to me and we were lifting some uh, panel to the roof of some uh, shopping mall that was under construction. And then I wanted to prove my knowledge of physics. And as the crane was lifting that uh, panel, you know, I started explaining. I said, oh, look, this panel is now experiencing the torque and uh, there is uh, this force and that force. And he looked at me and said, shut up and go and bring me those bricks over there. Good times. I love those times. Rough. Okay, well, that's all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed today's subject. There is only one more force to introduce in our atmospheric science series, and that is the Coriolis force. We will talk about Coriolis force in the next video in this series. Until then, goodbye.